Hello, uh, my name is Dr. Kathleen Hudson. Um, I'm a, well, was a PhD researcher here at the University of Sheffield as part of the Center for the History of the Gothic and Sheffield Gothic. Um, have since gotten my PhD, so now I'm a doctor of Gothic literature. So my research um, centers around the sort of first wave of Gothic texts, so from Horace Walpole's uh, The Castle of Otranto, uh, published in 1764, um, through to about the 1810s and 20s. Um, and I, so I look at texts, I look at Walpole's work, I look at um, the work of Anne Radcliffe, uh, Matthew Lewis, Charlotte Dacre, and basically what I look at in, in those texts are servants and servant narratives. So instances in those texts where servants um, servant characters either verbally or non-verbally perform a narrative. So they um, tell ghost stories, they have these dialogues, they're often, you know, showing a lot of fear, they're, they go very pale, they run around, they do all this great stuff. Um, it's a area of Gothic study um, that's been really marginalized and really underappreciated recently. Uh, most people tend to think of Gothic servants as being very, very much just the comic relief and um, this very unsophisticated way of, uh, you know, having a bit of comic relief, maybe not saying something not quite so nice about um, the lower classes, but in fact they have very sophisticated uh, narratives, they tell stories, they, they articulate a lot of political and social anxieties. Um, so it is a really fascinating area of, of Gothic literature. Oh, so why study the Gothic? Um, it's a difficult question, I think probably because every person studies the Gothic for their own individual reasons. So it's, it's I mean, personally, my reasons for studying the Gothic could have anything to do with a number of, of texts that I was, I was reading when I was young or movies I saw when I was, when I was young. Just a tendency to really enjoy ghost stories um, when I was little. Uh, at the same time, the Gothic is one of those very universal um, modes, I think. And uh, I think the reason why people keep studying it and why it's so important still um, is that it touches on, again, very universal emotions about fear, fear of death, and it encodes them in very particular ways. So I know recently with uh, the rise of stuff like Twilight or Penny Dreadful and uh, popularization of certain older forms. Um, there's always this tendency to view the Gothic as a little bit outdated, a bit camp, a bit uh, not unimportant, but, but a bit silly. Um, but at the same time, these monsters, monsters, ghosts, fears, um, these are negotiated for particular reasons. I mean, witches are scary for particular reasons. Vampires are still scary. This, the idea of coming back from the dead, those are still things that uh, scare us on a very fundamental level. So I think uh, one of the reasons I study the Gothic is to sort of trace back um, these coded images and these coded monsters and these coded objects and try to trace where they come from in the human psyche. Because that's really a very fundamental question about who we are um, that you can get by examining our fear of death, our fear of the unknown, um, all these things that are sort of underlying bits of the, of the Gothic. And at the same time, it, is, it can be very silly. It can be quite goofy. I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the uh, uh, sort of exploitation 80s horror, evil dead things where, you know, it's taking very serious issues like death and violation and making it something easily digestible, um, something funny, something kind of interesting. Uh, so yeah, that's why you study Gothic. Favorite Gothic work? That's a very tricky one. I think it sort of depends on what, what uh, form of media you're, you're looking at. Um, in terms of favorite Gothic texts, I am a huge fan of Anne Radcliffe's work um, because I, I feel that uh, um, she's, she's, been, she's been examined quite a bit very critically, but there's still things that you can find in Anne Radcliffe's work that are very sort of on the border of, of a lot of different other things. Again, like the servants, she, does, she writes excellent servants and you tend, there's always this tendency to skip a few of her more lengthy servant dialogues or her descriptions of landscapes or any number of things. But when you read them very closely, you see that she is actually working on a very um, 
complex critical level. Um, my favorite Gothic uh, book is probably actually not an Anne Radcliffe book. It's it's um, Favell's La Ville Vamp Vampire, which is, is an interesting bit of actually fan fiction in which Anne Radcliffe is a vampire hunter. So if you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. Anne Radcliffe Vampire Hunter. Vampires are glowing green and they can split off into a bunch of different uh, kind of creatures of, of the people that they've ate, like little versions of people that they ate. Um, so th that's, that's one of the, my favorite Gothic texts. Um, Another, if we're looking at stuff, stuff like films and, and movies, um, I'm a huge fan of the Evil Dead trilogy. And uh, just, just that very goofy um, sort of exploitation horror uh, thing where you know, people are cut, getting their hands cut off, they have chainsaws for hands, walls are dripping blood, everyone's you know, insane. Um, and I think it's a, it's a good, important uh, look at that thin line between very campy horror and very serious horror. Um, I think one of my favorite scenes ever in, in horror film is in Evil Dead 2 uh, when Ash, who's the main character, um, is sort of at the edge. He's been tortured by the house. He's been tortured by the deadites and all these you know, undead creatures. And um, he tries to sit down and he falls into a chair and the chair breaks. And all the furniture in the room, because of course it's all possessed, starts laughing at him. And he starts laughing at himself and almost seamlessly it goes from Ash laughing to Ash screaming because the, he realizes it's, 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 he's laughing at himself because the situation is ridiculous, but then he realizes that the furniture is laughing at him and it's sort of this horrific, wonderful moment. And I think, again, that's, that's a lot about the Gothic and horror, which is this, it's this very thin line in terms of identity between um, you know, destruction and creation um, between knowing and unknowing. Um, so it is very interesting, yeah. Um, the Center for the History of the Gothic is always working to promote Gothic studies and put up new and interesting um, Gothic events, uh, Gothic information. So um, please stay tuned to this space, um, this website, because uh, we're constantly looking to improve it. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you, hopefully. So.